are just absolutely wonderful. They just make me smile. But does the process of achieving those perfectly even pleats make us smile? Well, for me, it usually didn't. Until one wonderful day when I discovered the fork. Yes, I said fork. But what do these two things really have in common? Well, there's one thing, and that's the marvelous technique of fork pleats. Using a fork, you can create those perfectly even pleats that make us smile without all the frowning and frustration that pleats usually involve. With this one simple and easy technique in your array of sewing skills, you might just go out and start pleating anything and everything. Literally. It happened to me, I learned it, and now I basically just pleat anything instead of gathering it. Because I just love pleats so much. So in today's video, we are going to learn about this marvelous technique of fork pleating. First of all, you can make all sizes of pleats as long as you have forks that correspond to those sizes. Personally, I have a tiny dessert fork, which makes perfect half-inch pleats, a regular dinner fork, which achieves a one-inch pleat, and then for whatever crazy project might have need of a one and a half inch pleat, I have a serving fork. Oh, and I have another random fork, which makes three quarter inch pleats. So poke around your utensil drawers and you might be surprised at the various sized forks you find. And if you don't, well, thrift stores are a very good place to get forks and they're fairly inexpensive. If your thrift store is charging a fortune for forks, then they've got issues. So anyway, there are a lot of forks in the world and I'm pretty sure you can find some that you already own that will work great for this technique. Before we go on to learning this technique, I do want to mention later in this video, I will be talking about calculations for three different pleating patterns. And this is my least favorite part of pleating, the calculations. And because of that, I decided to put that at the end of the video. And also, for some of you, you might already know how to do calculations, and bravo to you. But if you don't, stick around to the end of this video so we can learn how to do those calculations. Now we can go on to learning this technique. So the three things you need for this technique are literally a fork, pins, and even pins are an optional thing, we'll talk about that in a minute, and of course your fabric that you plan on pleating. Before pleating, let's look at the fork. So as you can see here, there's a curve to the fork. Basically, this means that you've got to place the fork at the correct angle to easily do the pleat. So that might have sounded a bit weird, but once you start pleating, you'll kind of realize what I mean. It's kind of hard to remember where you're supposed to place your fork, at least when you've taken a break from using this technique and come back to it. It's like, whoa. What happened? My brain is doing something weird. But after you start doing it, you'll realize the correct angle and such. So I'm gonna teach you that right now. This is how you place your fabric on the fork. With the inside of the curve of the fork facing you, slide the fabric into that bottom slot. Now, twist the fork towards yourself until the inside of the curve of the fork is facing up. Keep your fork like this as you arrange your pleat. Once the placement of the pleat is correct and it's all smooth, hold the fabric in place as you slide the fork out. Then place a pin in the pleat. Continue like this for as long as needed. Okay, so if you thought that was easy, let me show you an even easier way to do these pleats. Yup, that's right. Do the pleating right at your machine. Instead of placing that pin into the pleat to hold it in place, hold the pleat with your hands while you sew through the pleat. And another thing, you can also make box pleats using a fork. You simply have to reverse your direction of your folded pleat every other one and that's how you create those box pleats. Yeah. 
And that, my friends, is it for explaining the marvelous fork pleat technique. Be blown away and now go pleat anything and everything. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to do some calculations for different pleating patterns. And I already mentioned this as well, but it's my least favorite thing to do. Because, well, math. Since this is the unfortunate case, I actually sometimes just skip this step. Yep, I just wing it and hope it's okay. Now, when I choose to go this lazy route, I usually add some extra fabric to whatever I'm pleating, and then once I'm done pleating, I just cut that extra bit off, whatever extra bit it may be. I do this especially when I'm doing a ruffle or something like that. But actually, as I'm thinking about it, I actually do do some calculations for this wing it method, but I have it so memorized that it doesn't feel like a calculation. And that brings me to this one point about a pleat. A pleat is a three to one ratio. So what does that mean? Well, for every one pleat, there's three times the amount of fabric in that pleat. You have a flat piece of fabric, you fold it over, and now you have a double thick piece of fabric. But of course, it's just a fold. So now it needs to be folded back onto itself and that's where you achieve a pleat. And as you can see, there's three layers of fabric at that place. When working with this ratio, it doesn't matter how small or large your pleat is. You just have to remember this one thing. With every pleat that you make, you are taking up three times that amount of fabric. I hope that made sense, but with this basic information, you can calculate how much unpleated fabric you need for your pleating project. So let's look at a quick example. So I want to attach a pleated ruffle to the edge of my skirt. That skirt edge measures 200 inches. So three times that 200 inches, that means I need 600 inches of unpleated fabric. Did you follow that? So I threw out a lot of numbers but it really, it just comes down to a three to one ratio. My fabric, my starting unpleated fabric, is always going to end up a third the size once I pleat it. Now, that's the basic pleating method. And now that you know it, it's a pretty easy calculation to figure out how much fabric you need for your pleating project. But to make things a bit more complicated, you can actually choose to space your pleats farther apart, or you can stack them. But this requires different calculations. In other words, you can take up more or less fabric based on how you space those pleats. Let's first talk about pleats that are spaced apart from each other. It's just like it sounds. Instead of the pleats being butted right up next to each other, they have a space in between them. Here's an example. I make a half inch pleat and then space the second pleat a half inch away from the first pleat. I now have a one inch section which includes only one half inch pleat. As I go on pleating like this, for every half inch pleat I make, I'm actually creating a one inch section. So just remember, these sections are made up of one half inch pleat and one half inch space. So how does this pleating pattern change our calculations, our ratio? I find the easiest way to think about this is in parts. As I discussed, a pleat is a three to one ratio. So basically that means that one pleat has three parts in it. In the example of a half inch pleat, this means that there are three half inch parts to that pleat. I then add 
a half inch space before going on to the next pleat. So what have I just done? I've added a half inch space to that section. Essentially, I've added another half inch part to that pleat section. So now I have four half inch parts to this section. Let's do some math real quick. There are four parts to this section. Remember our section measures one inch and then our parts equal a half inch. So if we multiply out four times a half inch, that gives us two inches. So here we have the equation that boils down to two to one. So the ratio is two to one. So for every two inches of unpleated fabric, you will be creating a one inch finished pleated section. Let's go back to the pleated ruffle I want to add to my skirt edge. This skirt edge is still 200 inches, but this time I want to use the spaced pleating pattern. Because this pleating pattern is two to one, this time I only need 400 inches of unpleated fabric for my ruffle. Boil down, this is the conclusion. For a pleating pattern that has one pleat and then a space of equal size to the pleat, it's a ratio of two to one. Okay, so I think that's enough for this spaced pleating pattern. Now there are ways that you can place your pleats closer together or farther apart in proportion to your pleat size, but that's a whole nother ball of wax. And to keep it simple for this video, we're not gonna go into that. But if you're a math person and want to figure that out, go for it. And even if you're not a math person, just play around with some paper or fabric and you'll be able to figure out those different spacing patterns and the ratios. For the next pleating pattern, I like to call them stacked pleats. Now I have seen some information that calls them deep pleats, but personally I feel like stacked pleats gives a better visual because it's just like it sounds. The pleats are stacked on top of each other. These pleats are specifically for those times that you just really want a lot of fabric in your pleats, whether it's for a really large skirt or a really frilly ruffle, whatever it may be. It just gets a lot of fabric into one consolidated area. Now the calculations for this type of pleating is a bit weird because when you start stacking pleats, they start borrowing space from each other. When I stack this pleat, the top part of the bottom pleat starts becoming the bottom of the top pleat. The fact that a pleat has a three to one ratio has not been proven incorrect in this case, but since the pleats are borrowing from each other, sharing the same fabric, the ratio has to be thought of a little bit differently. Because of this, it's kind of hard to think of these pleats in the three to one ratio. So this is the way I like to think about this situation. I need to give that overlapping amount to one pleat and take it away from the other pleat. So here's an example. I'm going to make four pleats. These pleats are one inch pleats. I'm stacking them, but leaving a quarter inch of each pleat showing. After making the four pleats, we find that the finished pleated section measures one inch. I'm marking the outer fold of each pleat. Now I'm unfolding the section to find how much fabric is in each of these four pleats. I find the distance between the folds of the pleat measure two and a quarter inches. Before we go on to figure the math, which will give us the ratio, let's remember that the goal is to find how many inches of fabric fit in that one inch finished section. So now let's do the calculations. The amount of fabric in each pleat is two and a quarter inches. I made four pleats and the total pleated section measures one inch. 
So let's first multiply two and a quarter inches by four pleats. The result is nine inches. So we have nine inches of unpleated fabric in the one inch finished section. That translates into a ratio of nine to one. With a stacked pleat pattern that shows a quarter of the pleat size, the ratio is nine to one. Now, that may have been a little confusing, so here's another little example of this same pleating pattern. My pleat size is two inches. Using this pleat pattern of showing one quarter of the pleat, this means a half inch of the pleat will show. Because we all love variation in our sewing, here's another stacked pleating pattern that I use quite often but it does require different calculations. So here's another little example that will show this pleating pattern and the ratio. My pleat size is a half inch. When stacked, only a quarter inch of the pleat shows. This is a stacked pleat pattern that shows half of the pleat size. So remember, we have half inch pleats and a quarter inch is showing. So that means half of the pleat size is shown. The ratio for this pattern is five to one. As with the space pleating pattern, there's quite a few different combinations that you can do with these stacked pleats, whether you stack them closer together or farther apart based on the ratio of your pleat size. And these each will have different ratios. So play around with your calculations or play around with some fabric and see what type of ratios you can come up with. And remember, all our brains work differently. So you might work best with math problems and figuring that out, or you might be the person to just play with fabric. For me, I like to think of my pleats in parts, and often I sit down and start like playing with my hands to think how the fabric's going, and really I just play around with it. So do the same for you and find your own way of creating those pleats and their corresponding ratios. Before this video comes to a complete close, I do want to mention this one thing. You can work these calculations in the reverse. So what do I mean by that? So this is something that I do quite often with my pleats. Say I have a 100 inch piece of fabric. I want to pleat that down into 10 inches. So how I do that is take my large number, which is 100 inches, and divide it by my small number, which is 10 inches. The result, of course, is 10. So what this means is I need to find a pleat ratio of 10 to 1. So now I can go grab uh, some fabric or do some math to figure out a pleating pattern that has a ratio of 10 to 1. Once I figure that pleating pattern out, I can now go pleat my 100 inches, and using that pleating ratio, I will get it down to 10 inches. With this information under your belt of sewing skills, you can tackle any pleating problem that's thrown your way, and you'll be able to create perfectly even pleats the first time. And don't forget, you have a friendly little fork that will speed up the process. It's a fork that won't ask you to do any math. So thanks for watching this video, and I hope it did not fry your brain. I know my brain's a bit fried after writing this out and figuring out a way to present all this information and math in an understandable way, my brain's fried. But I hope the reason my brain's fried is because I was doing that, racking my brain for the right way to say all this stuff, and not because the finished result is brain frying. I hope it came out in an understanding way. But let me know in the comments, and if you have any questions, please write them and let me know. And if you aren't already subscribed, be sure to hit that red button. I post every week, and usually my videos are not this math intensive and can actually be quite fun. So, if you aren't already, be sure to subscribe, and now go give your own brain a rest, and then go out into your own sewing area and learn, create, and inspire. Pleats. Pleats are absolutely...
absolutely wonderful, aren't they? They just always pleats are just wonderful, aren't they? They just make me smile. They're all even and just so nice. Yeah. So poke around and use your potential. Oh, 